In this video, we delve a little deeper onto uh, very quantitative aspects of uh, UV spectroscopy by introducing the concept of the Frank Condon principle. All right, so let's uh, think about the uh, orbital diagram for a generic uh, diatomic molecule. Okay, so you're going to have perhaps uh, a couple of uh, bonding orbitals right here that are fully occupied, and then some antibonding orbitals. Okay, the idea here is that with uh, photons of UVB's uh, energy, okay, you can promote uh, delicrine transition, and generally the one that you're going to be studying is the one from the HOMO to the LUMO. Okay, so there's some selection rules that we have uh, examined here. Okay, so that will be your initial state, and that will be your final state. Now, I'm going to draw, redraw those states here, but uh, only using uh, this type of energy. Okay, so this is what I call the energy of this state, the state that is produced by uh, uh, orbital occupations like this. And of course, this energy will be much higher. This is what we call E1. These are now electronic states, and again, they represent uh, electronic occupations of your molecular orbitals. Okay, great. Now, uh, the idea here is that UVB spectroscopy okay, uh, uh, is good for to promote uh, those electronic excitations okay, because this difference in energy between that state and that state, this state and that state, that falls in the UV, uh, UVB's regime. But a question that is very interesting to ask is, well, uh, uh, we know that uh, there's various modes in which you can uh, deposit energy in a molecule. One of them is electronic. You can, you can excite electrons in the molecule. But at the same time, if this is, say, a diatomic molecule, it's easy to understand that perhaps one of the things that you could do as well is excite the vibrations, much as what you can do with infrared spectroscopy. Okay, uh, now notice that the difference in energy between two electronic states, okay, this is what you can bridge with uh, UV's uh, photons, okay, is actually much greater than what you have for uh, difference between vibrational energy, energy states of the same molecule. Okay, where uh, the transitions that you n normally excite are V0 to V1. Okay, this is done with infrared photons, which are low energy. This is done with uh, UVB's photons that are of much higher energy. But the question that, that we can ask is, well, if you have a UVB's photon, because it takes just so little extra energy, to, uh, 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 in addition to exciting the electrons, uh, exciting the vibrations, could you actually do both? Could you excite both uh, ele electrons, like here, and vibrations with the same UVB's photon. The energy should be should be uh, enough. Right, so the answer is yes. It turns out that uh, when you do UVB spectroscopy, and you're both exciting uh, ele electrons like we have here, but at the same time, because uh, vibrations take so little energy to get excited, you have sufficient energy in a UVB's photon to excite also the vibrations. Okay, so the way that we normally uh, depict this is to say that well, in addition to having the electronic energy loss here we're going to superimpose okay, the vibrational energy, energy levels for each one of these electronic states. Right? So this will be the ground vibrational state in the ground electronic state. This is the first excited vibrational state in the ground electronic state. That will be V2 of the ground electronic state and so forth. We could do exactly the same thing for uh, the electronic excited state. That will be the ground vibrational state of the uh, excited electronic state. That will be uh, the uh, V1 excited vibrational state in the excited electronic state, and so forth. All right. So the idea is that in principle, uh, uh, your system is going to be in this state. So both the ground vibrational and electronic. And again, you can, in principle, send the system from there to there, or perhaps even there, or any of the vibrational uh, uh, states. And this is something that you can actually detect in your uh, spectrum, and we're going to see exactly how. Right, so, to try to understand exactly uh, uh, how the rules of these transitions are, in other words, well, uh, how do you know if you go from V0 to V0, or V0 to V1, V0 to V2, between the ground electronic and excited electronic state? Okay, uh, again, to try to explain that, uh, we're going to invoke here the Frank Condon principle. Okay, so let's read through all this energy diagram that we have right here but now using the atomic energy curves, because that is going to allow us to understand this a little better. Okay, so now I'm going to be drawing exactly these energy states, okay, but with the envelope uh, that signifies that we are talking perhaps about a di diatomic molecule. Okay, so this will be an AB molecule, here okay, where this is the distance between the AB atoms, and we're looking at how the energy, the potential energy increases. Okay, so this is the curve that represents the E0 state, the ground electronic state, 
And within that easier state, you can have vibrational states. Okay, so that would be your V0, that would be your V1, that would be your V2, and so forth. If uh, we're using the harmonic uh, oscillator approximation, the energy difference between those states should be exactly the same, which I haven't run very clearly there. But again, that energy gap should be identical to the energy gap and so forth. All right, so now the question is, well, how would be the electronic excited state uh, uh, be superposed into this diagram? Okay, so we know that uh, this uh, E1 state, the electronic excited state, is much higher in energy than the E0 state. Okay, so we expect to have a curve up here, okay? At the same time, something happens that is quite interesting about the bond order, right? If we have, uh, if we calculate the bond order and we assume that these are bonding orbitals and those are anti-bonding orbitals, the bond order in the ground electronic state will be two, but when you think about this, the bond order in the electronic excited state would be uh, three electrons in bonding, minus one in anti-bonding, the bond order will reduce to one. And here, the bond order is equal to two, here, the bond order is equal to 1. And what, we'll actually, what actually this means is that, well, the energy uh, it should be higher. But also what we actually find is that the bond that you have in that molecule is a little weaker. Okay, And the internuclear distance between the A, B atoms in the electronic excited state that only has a bond order of, order of 1 should be a little longer. Okay, So then what's going to happen is that when we draw uh, these, uh, the energy of this E1 state up here, Okay, we have to uh, make sure that the uh, interatomic distance at equilibrium is a little longer than what we actually have in the ground state. Okay, so this is going to look something like this. Okay, that will be the electronic side of state. Okay, but again, importantly, this is the equilibrium distance. Okay, this is longer than what we have for the ground state because the one order has been reduced from two to one. Okay, aside from that, what we'll have right here is exactly the same thing. Okay, that will be, this is what we call uh, E1, this is E0, and then you have vibrational energy states in um, V1, uh, in E1 as well. Okay, so that is V1, this is V2, alright, so E1, V is equal to 2, then you will have here V is equal to 3, and so forth. Okay, alright, so let me erase this, and now we're ready to introduce here the Frank Condom Principle. Okay, so again, the question that we're asking is, well, we know that in the ground state, we're going to be uh, right here. Okay, as a matter of fact, if we look at the wave function for the vibrational state, okay, for the ground state, it actually looks like this, which means that the probability of finding the system right at the uh, center, uh, right at the gluon distance, is actually maximum. So you expect the system to be mostly at that particular distance. Right. So then what we do is we actually send a photon, okay, and then we're going to excite the system from the ground electronic state to the excited electronic state, but we might also excite here uh, the vibrations, okay? So you might fall maybe in V0, or maybe in V1, maybe in V2, maybe in V3, uh, and again, we're trying to answer the question is which one is more intense of all of those possibilities. All right, so actually that is going to be related to uh, the overlap between the wave functions in the uh, excited state and the ground state. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is uh, draw the probability distributions of the vibrational states uh, that come from the harmonic oscillator model. Okay, so the Franconon principle says as the following. There has to be a good overlap between uh, the probability distribution in the state that you're departing from and the state that you're landing in. Okay, All right, so let's see how we do that. Well, first, what we actually have to recognize is that the transition is going to be vertical. Okay, so or we'll have to justify that. Notice that when I'm drawing this vertical arrow to signify the transition, okay, I'm not actually uh, making it uh, something that is called vertical. And actually, that has a physical implication that is very important. Okay, right, let's examine the, t the lifetimes or the, uh, the times for the various motions that are involved right here. A vibration, we actually know that it's quite fast. Okay, so uh, usually the fastest vibrations have periods of about 10 femtoseconds, 10 uh, times 10 to the minus 15 seconds. Okay, so this is going very fast. But it turns out that the promotion of the electron, the jump of the electron from that state to this state is actually much, much faster. Okay, so what that means is that the molecule is vibrating, okay, and again, uh, the vibrational period is, is slow compared to the electron transition, and then what happens is that we send a photon and the electron jumps really, really fast. 
Okay, because this electron transition is so fast, uh, while it's actually happening, the vibration doesn't have any uh, uh, time to change in the nuclear distance at all. Okay, so what that means is that again, when the electron is uh, uh, when the system jumps from the low uh, electronic state to the high energy electronic state, okay, there's no time for the vibration to catch up to that uh, fast electronic transition, and there's no change to the nuclear distance. Okay, again, this motion is com is very very slow compared to the time that it takes to uh, uh, for the electron to jump. And then what that means is that you can assume that this uh, uh, excitation is actually vertical. The internal uh, distance due to this vibration does not change at all during the electronic transition. That being said, uh, that's actually what we're going to be using to try to map uh, uh, what of the possible transitions is actually the most uh, intense. Okay, so let's try to see if we can draw here a spectrum that we expect to find for all of the possible bands. Okay, so this is the wavelength of the photon uh, growing in that direction, which means low energy, and this means high energy, and this will be the intensity. Right, so the first transition that you can have is V0 to V0, okay? And that will be actually the lowest energy transition, right? It takes uh, uh, the lowest energy to go to, from V0 to V0, then to V0 to V1, V0 to V2, V0 to V3, and so forth, okay? So V0 to V0, is the lowest uh, energy possible, which means that you will actually be uh, in this region of this spectrum. All right, so when we examine the overlap of the wave function from the ground up electronic state to the excited electronic state in V0, we see that actually the wave function does not have much of a probability, or the probability of this state is actually not very high right where this vertical line crosses. Okay, so that, that's actually what the Frank quantum principle tells you, because the overlap is not very good, that transition from V0 to V0, which should be a peak right here, that is the V0 to V0, uh, and we can call this prime to make sure that we uh, say that that is the excited state, okay, it's actually not very intense at all, because again, the overlap of the wave functions is not very high. I'm going to use here primes to denote what is the ground state and the excited state. All right, so let's then examine the next one. So the next uh, possible transition will be V0 to V1. When you go V0 to V1, continue along this line, okay, so notice that here you have a little bit more probability than you had in V0, but it's still not great, right? So it turns out that uh, you will have a little bit of more overlap, okay, for this peak, V0 to V prime is equal to 1, but again, still not great. Okay, so what about the rest? We go from V0 to V2, continue along this line, and notice that in V0 to V2 right here, you're hitting there uh, a peak of probability in the V2 state. There is a really good overlap between the wave function, the ground vibrational state, uh, electronic uh, and uh, vibrational state, uh, to the, uh, with the wave function of the V2 vibrational state in the excited electronic state. And what that means is that that transition is actually going to have a, a large intensity. Okay, so this will be V uh, is equal to zero to V prime is equal to two. Okay, and again, you can continue to do this. You will see that V3 will not be as good, so you will have something like this that will be V3, you have V4, V5, and so forth. Okay, so this is actually how UV spectra take, uh, uh, look like when you actually are taking them in higher resolution. Okay, uh, uh, in reality, when you're actually doing this in the laboratory, what happens is that the, usually the spectra, uh, you're taking the spectra photometers, actually don't have uh, this type of resolution to resolve individual peaks for uh, transitions between vibrational states, and then what you end up seeing is like a blobby feature, uh, uh, which is very characteristic of uh, UV spectra and taken in lower resolutions. Okay, so this also explains why many of the spectra that you actually take uh, in the laboratory okay, are blobby and unresolved. The idea is that, well, because you're taking them in low resolution, you actually are not able to see the fine structure that arise from simultaneous promotion of uh, electrons and vibrations, okay? But again, if you were able to take this in high resolution, uh, you would actually see this vibrational uh, structure. And again, uh, we still have that uh, these lines will be a little broad because of you have uh, the, the presence of natural broadening, collisional broadening, the Doppler effect, and those sort of effects that we actually have studied. Okay, so uh, in this video, we have uh, introduced the Frank Condon Principle which has served to uh, add a little bit of complexity to what happens when you actually do UV spectroscopy. The main element here, or the, uh, the key uh, concept, is to recognize 
that GBB's photons are sufficiently energetic to simultaneously excite electronic transitions and vibrational transitions. Okay, so uh, the consequence of that is that when you take GBB spectra in high resolution, okay, uh, you actually can describe okay, uh, small little peaks uh, that correspond to a unique electronic transition, okay, and the little peaks only differ in the vibrational transition that accompanies that electronic transition. The intensity of these little peaks that correspond to uh, vibrational transitions within an electronic transition, those are dictated by the overlap of the wave functions of the uh, states that you're written, and that is uh, dictated or governed by what we call the Frank-Common principle.